43% of teens say they would change their online behavior if they knew that their parents could see what they were doing. It, it, it's scary. It really, really got me, really got me thinking about this. 39% think their online activity is private from everyone, including their own parents. 20% of kids think their parents have no idea what they're doing online. 55% of teens have given out personal information to someone that they don't even know. They don't have no clue who they are, including photos and physical descriptions. 60% created profiles or personal sites. Approximately 20% of teens update their sites or profiles at least once a day. They're going in and changing their pictures or they're going in and changing their status from in a relationship or out of a relationship. They're, they're changing all these things two or three times a day. 64% of, and, and there's some adults that do the same thing. It's not just children. There, there's a lot of adults that do that. I don't know if I've changed my profile picture on Facebook in forever. It's my grandkids. That's the ones I'm proud of. You know what I'm saying? 64% of teens have uploaded photos to social media sites. Now, once those are there, Sister Judy, they're there forever. Once they go on the Internet, they're there forever for someone to have access to. 22% of TJ, teenagers log on to their favorite social media site more than 10 times a day. 85% of parents with teenage children ages 13 and 17 report that their child have a social networking site. Of the active adult users on Facebook, 66% reported that they did not know that they had privacy controls or even it, that it existed on Facebook. There's privacy controls that exist on Facebook where you as a parent can go in and set those. Well, these kind of things don't happen. I might get egged tonight before this is all said and done. Some of these, some of these kids. Facebook Messenger has, has 500 million users. Facebook Messenger alone has 500 million users. And Facebook is 1.4 million users on Facebook. One in five U.S. teenagers who regularly log on to the Internet say they have received an unwanted social solicitation via of the web. Solicitations were defined as requests to engage in sexual activities or sexual talks or to give out personal sexual information. And only 25% of those told their parents. That's very important. This is very important that we know these things and understand not only how our children can be involved, but adults also. We can fall into that, fall into that trap. Of, of, of being careful. Electronic communication is the biggest form of communication there is because like some of you raised your hands, you'd rather send a text message than have to talk to someone. The next thing that we want to talk about is artistic expressions. That's, that's songs. That's, that's rap. Man, I have people come down my street all the time. And some of the stuff that they're playing, it's just... Mm, I don't even know how they sit in the car with it, with the, with the music turned up so loud. Run into it when we're when we're at Casey's, filling up with gas. But these songs, these the, these lyrics, this music, they have d nasty, dirty, and ungodly lyrics in most of them. And we shouldn't listen to them. It goes back to what Matthew fifteen eighteen says. It's either going to po pollute, or it's going to violate the chastity. Or the purity of our heart and our mind, our language, because go, guess what? What goes in is going to be what comes out. So we have to be careful of that. Uh, sign language. We all know what the universal sign is. We all, we all aware of that, Brother Garrison. We, we all know that. <laughs> he was laughing. But it's nasty. You know, a, 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 a lot of these gang gang members have signs that they use. Uh, I, th I even, I even, some of y'all forgive me, but I even thought about tattoos and some of the tattoos that people get. It's an expression of what's on the inside. It's an expression of what's going on in the inside. Whatever we communicate, this is this is very important. Whatever we communicate, we have to speak 
to be holy and pleasing to God. Whether it's verbal or whether it's electronic or whether it's written, it can be many, many different forms, but it's got to be pleasing to God. It's got to make Him happy. It's got to make Him happy. It don't have to make, it don't have to make me happy. Speech has an increased moral significance because of the effect it has on those who hear it. I want you just to take a few minutes and look at that slide right there. And if you can't tell what it is, it's a child that's crying and there's a hand wrapped, his, wrapped around his neck with words written all over it. When I seen that, it just, it just said, use your words. Your words have power, so use them wisely. I'm going to share a story with you. I'm not, my dad... My dad passed away. He was he has been dead ten years ago this past Monday. And uh later on in life my dad and I had a good relationship. Uh some of the things that had happened earlier in our life, my dad had asked me to forgive him for it. We had a good relationship, Brother Billy, but I remember uh as a as a young child, maybe six, seven years old, he and my mother fighting, he and my mother arguing. And uh, some things that he said about me specifically, and I'm not I'm not putting my dad down, okay? Like I said, we we got things right, but I, I remember that, and I I remembered as as a, as a young young I don't know I was six or seven eight years old, and some of the things that my dad said about me to my mom, a lot of times he he had been drinking, but Larry, a lot of times they had been in an argument, uh, but those words they stick with you. Those words, they last. But Pete, a lot of times those words in my lifetime have motivated me to be a better person because of what was said to me well, as, a, as a little child. You can, you, can take, you can take this and you can make it about, you can put an adult in the same picture. But can, can I say this, and I'm not telling you how to be a parent, but we have to be careful what we say to our children and how we say them. Is, it, is that all right? Because that that slide just spoke words to me when I seen it. It just it just tore me up inside when I seen that. It just right at my heart because it still goes back to, to what happened to me in my younger life. But we but we got to be careful because sometimes we think they never heard it. Sometimes we think that it, it doesn't bother them, but it does. It does. Maybe you've maybe you've had an experience like that. Our words we speak to our children will impact them for the rest of their life. Our words that we, 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 we speak to our children will last for the rest of our life. Uh, I watched a little video clip and studying this. I looked at a lot of different things and a, and, a, and a lot of different... I've got papers and notes, as Brother Gilles said. I like, to, I like to get into it, but I watched the video clip, Brother Richard, and... Uh, a, a, a big Baptist church had actually put it put it on one of their sites as I as I was looking at it, and it, it showed a it showed a family and the and the man got up early in the morning. He was getting out of bed. Uh, he went and it, it never it never said any words. All of it was actions. As you're watching the video clip, all of it was actions. And uh, he goes in and his wife's in another bedroom and he gets her up and you could tell they're back and forth at each other and they're arguing and they're carrying on and everything. And then she goes in and she gets the, the two little girls up and kind of kind of the same situation. You, she's not talking too nice to the little girls. You can see it. And they're all going about their own business about getting ready and they're, they're getting ready because they're going to go somewhere and... They, they get ready, the little girl gets ready, and she comes down, and her mama's getting on her about her clothes and makes her go back and change. And there's just a lot of different things that are, that are happening. But finally, they get ready, they go out, they get in a van, and off they go. And it shows them pull them up, pulling up in front of a building. And they go, they go into the building, and the next clip is they're all sitting on the pews at church. Raising their hands. Praising God and not condemning nobody because I've done it myself. But you stop and think about that, about the words that we say. Uh, 
it's you know it's just life. I understand that it's just life sometimes when you're when you're dealing with that. But I thought that spoke so much. They 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 they, they lifted their hands and they began to worship God out of the same mouth that negative things probably were coming out of. You know, it, it, it's it's how it affects us. Uh, we remember things that have been said to us or about us years later. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I begin to look at that, and I begin to try. That's actually one of the first scriptures when Brother Gio, Brother Johnny, when Brother Gio asked me to ask me to talk about. This is kind of one of the first scriptures that really come to my mind uh, about about speech, about the power of the tongue. Uh, we need to speak life. We need to speak positive things. I looked at the scripture and I tried to break it down, and we we all know you cannot, you can't actually kill someone with your words, or can you? You might not actually be able to physically kill someone with your words, Brother Ray, but there have been cases. We talked about cyberbullying earlier, where kids are being bullied because of something, Brother Jill, that's being said. So what we say can lead to someone taking their own life. We can lead someone to commit suicide by what we say. So this scripture, when it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, Making fun of someone. We could lead to someone taking their own life, cyberbullying, or on the other hand, we could uplift or we can increase someone's confidence within their self by what we say and how we say it. It doesn't always have to be negative. It can, all, it can be positive. We can encourage one another with the words that we speak and with the words that we say, and that's what we should do. And I believe, I believe that we do that. But there's time in our life when, when this has happened. You know, there's times in our life when we've said stuff that we regretted. I told you before I ever began that there's been times in my life when I've said things that I wish I could take back, but you can't. Once it's spoken, one of, one of, the, one of the writers, or I think Brother Pete even says that that's sometimes that's the reason God gave us two ears and one mouth. We need to listen twice as much as what we speak or what we say. Because of that, I begin to begin to look at this scripture, and I'm getting I'm getting ready to close and turn it back to Brother Gio, and I'll get, uh, I'll start again next week. But when we when we look at that, when we think about we think about that, it says death, and it it comes from a Greek word called mafeth, m a v e t h, and that means die. It's a state of death, or having one put to death, or executing someone with your words, if you will. And it speaks about life. On the other hand, living or alive, that, mean, that can mean to revive someone, that can mean to restore someone. If you, if you meet someone that's down, someone that's depressed, we talked about depression this past Sunday night, you can lift those people up. They might even be thinking about taking their own life. You can lift them up and give them life by the words that we speak, by the words that we say. And that's what this scripture is telling us. You can sustain someone or you can preserve someone's life by the words that you speak to them. Words of encouragement, words of endearment. Then it says, are in the power. We have the power. That, that word power, Brother Geo, comes, comes from a Greek word, yod. That means it's in possession of in your hand. You have the ability to take that, those words, and use them as you will. Each one of us, we've got the power to be able to do that. We know the tongue is the origin of speech. You're either going to love it, or you're going to, you, 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 it says human appetite when you love something. Human appetite, you're going to eat it. You're going to devour, consume, or slay someone with the words that you say. And the fruit is going to be the offspring of what is spoken. The fruit is going to be the offspring of what is spoken, whether it's death, sorrow, anger, strife, or ha love, happiness, joy, and peace. Death and life denotes the seriousness and the wide-ranging effectiveness, effectiveness and consequences of the things that we say. So we either love death or life, the power of Satan, or the power of Jesus Christ. Whichever you love, 
You will eat or you will experience the fruit there of holy, godly communication with our spirit. There will never be anything we say that we have to stop and wonder about whether it's good or bad. We will know as soon as we speak. Have you ever spoken something and you know immediately whether it was good or bad? It should be in all cases. It should be like that, Sister Leanne. Next week, I, I want to look at speech from the standpoint of tongues. And why we speak in tongues and why we have the Holy Ghost for. That's what I want to talk about next week when we talk about speech. I know a lot of things tonight might have seemed to be negative. But there's a positive in it when we stop and think about the other side of it, Brother Larry, about what we can actually do with our mouth and with our, with our tongue. How we, can, how we can encourage someone or lift someone up. I'm going to talk about the book of James. If you get a chance this week to read out a book of James, book of James chapter 3, it talks about this tongue being set on fire from hell. It talks about our tongue being an unruly beast. So next week I want, I want to focus on that. Will you stand with me?